we're here at the credence table. It's called the credence table because it's roughly the direction you face when you say the creed. Very simple. The creed table. The credence table. The credence table has three main things on it. It has the water and wine. It has the bread. And it has a washing station for the celebrant. Now, there are often three priests at a church service here at St. Paul's. There will be a preacher. He wears what's called a cassock and surplice. There will be a deacon, which is the priest serving as deacon that Sunday. He sets the table and prepares it for communion. And there will be a celebrant. That's the person who says the consecration prayers over the elements so that we can all have communion. He helps us celebrate the supper. Okay, that's important because the person here is, who's setting the table with you, he will be the deacon for the day, not the celebrant. The deacon will first ask for bread. This is called a host box. Some people will call it a ciborium, although a ciborium should have a foot on it. But this is a host box or a ciborium. It's what the bread goes in. The deacon will ask for the bread. You'll hand him the bread, and he'll give, he may give you this back. If he does, you put it back. The next thing he will need is the wine. This is called a flagon. That's a fancy word for pitcher. A flagon has a top on it. If it had no top, it would be called a ewer. I don't know why, but that's why. That's what it would be called. But this one is the wine. We know it's the wine because it's the bigger of the two. And quite simply, we use more wine than water on a Sunday. All right. You will hand him the wine flagon. Handle first so that no one drops it. He'll take the wine and he'll pour a little portion into the chalice and then he'll give it back to you. You'll take it, put it back here on the credence table, and then you'll hand him the water. This is the flagon for the water. It's the smaller of the two. You'll hand it to him, uh, handle first. He may bless the wine. He may say a short prayer, uh, the water. He may say a short prayer over the water. If he does, you just pause and wait for him to take the wine from you. All of this is done slowly and elegantly if possible. Okay, he has now put the water and the wine into the chalice. He has the, the bread ready. So you're almost done here. The next thing to do is to wash the celebrant's hands. Now the celebrant is the guy who's wearing the fancy cape looking thing. That's called a chasuble. It represents that the church is clothed in charity. You will find the person with the fancy cape-looking thing, if there is one. If, if we don't use the chasuble for that service, like in Door Hall, then the celebrant will be the last person in line when you come forward at the beginning of the service. So the last person to come into church will be the celebrator, the celebrant. You put a towel on your hand with the cross facing the congregation. You will hold the lava bow. Sounds like lava bowl. This is not a bowl full of lava, but that's how it's pronounced in a sense. Lava bow. It's a Latin word that means washing. You will hold that in your left hand. You will take the cruet or flagon. This is a flagon. You will open it and hold your thumb on the cross and you will walk to the celebrant, never walking behind the altar, unless, of course, a priest tells you to. You can listen to him. But generally, only a priest is allowed to walk behind the altar. You'll go to the celebrant and you will pour a small amount of water over their fingertips. This is a ceremony representing that Christ washes their hands, their lips, and their soul before they celebrate Holy Communion. They'll say a short prayer while you do it. 
They will take the cloth, the towel, off of your, your hand and dry their hands. They'll put it back, and then you'll take everything back over to the credence table. You'll put it back nice and neat, watching your sleeves, because these are dangly and they catch on things. So you do everything nice and slowly, making sure you're not catching on anything. I've done that many times. And then it's time for the celebration to start. So now you'll go back to your seat, look around, see what everyone else is doing. If everyone is standing, stay standing. If everyone up here is uh, sitting, you can sit down. Just do what everyone else is doing. Pretty simple. You'll have the bells with you here, the, if you're in the church building. And the bells... You ring them when you hear, in remembrance of me, and when you hear, amen. Pretty simple. He'll say, in remembrance of me, you ring it three times, ding, ding, ding. In remembrance of me, three times, ding, ding, ding. And amen, everyone says a big amen, and you ring it three times, ding, ding, ding. That's how you serve at the credence table. 